So um, I should even start by thanking Joanne, not just you know for the entire opportunity to be here, but to put me after lunch. <laughs> I think uh, you know um, I definitely do better justice to this topic after lunch myself, speaking about myself, and also that uh, VC discussion was a hard act to follow. So. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about a scientist's journey. And before that, let me um, introduce to you 360 Pharma Solutions. This is a company, I may, it may not be something that you have heard of before, uh, but 360 Pharma Solutions is a proud supporter of the Westchester Biotech Project, and uh, including us to be a part of this uh, today's Innovation and Research Symposium 2019 for us to be part of this agenda. We thank you for the opportunity and are really glad to participate. So the, I'll introduce to you Dalphine Banerjee. Some of you have met her from before, the previous uh, sessions that have been held and the previous events. She's been an active participant. She's the principal consultant and CEO. And um, unfortunately, she was not able to be here. Uh, I'm not going to be able to fin fit into her shoes. But I will try my best, uh, give you a little information about my own journey as a scientist. And currently, I hold the title of Vice President, Clinical Medical Affairs Expert Engagement. Dalphine and I crossed paths when we uh, worked at Merck, the corporate pharma, uh, the corporate pharma giant. Um, but we did interact when we were in the scientific laboratories. So that's where our connection took place. And after my journey through uh, the pharmaceutical, corporate pharmaceutical industry, I've joined her in the 360 Pharma Solutions uh, company. So starting off on my topic, a scientist's journey, I want to bring up this image. This image is something that comes in um, into mind. And I see now that we have students in the audience uh, Keep this image in mind. It is an important image that breakthrough medicine to cr treat a critical disease is something that is unique and innovative. And it is something that is very important in the process. But the way I look at a scientist's journey is actually, it is a journey that showcases the landscape. The landscape that we often people who are experienced in the drug development call as the landscape of product development. And what you see here, oh, sorry, uh, if there was, uh, ah, giving you a little bit of my preview of my slides from before, but you see that orange bar there. That's that innovation. That's where that novel term, breakthrough idea comes through. And it goes into an investigation new drug application uh, in the US to the FDA, and that's what it is. But the rest of it is that journey. The different bars, the different processes that you see here are the processes that every product goes through. Different phases, different timelines, um, but you know that is a process, and that's usually what a scientist's journey encompasses. And so it's usually extensive preclinical assessment, phase one to phase three clinical trials, an FDA review at the end of it. And the FDA review, again, is a span of time. It's usually um, a year or more when a lot of questions are brought back and addressed. And if successful and there's approval, there's post-approval commitment studies that need to be conducted. A lim and again, with, based on that, there may be a limited availability of the product, so commercial gets involved in marketing the product, and then uh, during that journey again, towards the end, you have full availability of this product, which then uh, gives you the scope of what that product is going to deliver. So this is usually what is seen by many scientists. And so when I talk about showcasing the landscape, I'm, I'm particularly here referring to the landscape of drug development. And hopefully that is a sort of motivator to many of you, who, especially the young budding scientists in the audience, that um, 
getting involved in drug development requires, you know, what one of uh, our panel speakers had talked about, a curious mind. And that curious mind could get into drug development at different aspects and then invest their time to learn that journey. And so this brings about my journey and what I want to highlight to you uh, here today so that you, know, you understand that for me as a scientist, I would, you know, I, I was um, definitely out of the, um, my um, graduate studies very focused on finding that novel breakthrough idea. And I started off as a Ben scientist. As a Ben scientist, you know, I was responsible for my experiment, putting pen to paper, designing my experiment, ensuring that that experiment, success or failure, we came out with results at the end of the day that I could take away. And that's exciting, that's very empowering. It was very encouraging. I did that, I continued to do that, I honed my abilities, but then I worked for a corporate pharma. I worked for Merck at that time, and which meant that you did this work supporting um, a product. And so that, relate, that turned out into become a validated assay development, so you made sure that that lab experiment that you design is something that can be repeatable, that can be used as a qualifier for a product and that led to technology transfer. So you have an assay that you've developed, and it's validated, and can be transferred into the manufacturing facilities to support that product. And so, of course, I went on my merry way, because out of uh, the university, that is exciting to be able to have that empowering, result-oriented um, um, assignment, and did that for 10 years. And of course, through that process, I came to learn about so much more. I was very focused on my own lab and what I did. But then, um, being part of large corporate pharma at that time um, gave me the ability to see that there was a world out there, and I did want to experience it. So I took a bold step and moved into clinical study management. So that pen to paper, what I did for the experiments, I moved on to write clinical study protocols and manage clinical studies. Something very interesting happened. Through that exercise, I was working with external investigators. These are physicians who are out in the field. You're talking to them about that clinical study protocol that you wrote and convincing them, or even if you're not convincing them, you're encouraging them to do that investigation in their own investigative centers, basically their own you know, um, hospital associated, um, you know, where they're having their patients, where their patients are walking through, they're called investigative sites. So I was talking to these investigators who are MDs and helping them put those clinical studies through. And that opened up a new world for me. I was out of that silo of working within the company to taking that science and relating it outside to the outside investigator. And again, from there, it led off into something called global advisory boards. It's not only that you work with collaborators like um, MDs outside in the world, but global advisory boards, and this is um, for a particular therape therapeutic area, there's always scientific experts, they're MDs. They have a wealth of knowledge. They've already invested a lot of money. And you put them together in a um, round table. And Mark did this very often, so I benefited from that because I put those advisory boards together and got the advice, the therapeutic area knowledge that a combined advisory board can have could span hundreds of years because the combined enriched experience, they bring in knowledge that you can use to shape your product. And that's very useful because you need to use that knowledge to apply on how your product is going to be in eventually used. This is something very crucial, whether you're a small biotech, you're, you're a startup, or a large pharma, because we, we can do all this fantastic science. And believe me, as a bench scientist, I never thought of that. Um, you can do very cool science, but then in the end, it's the application to that patient that's important. And so 
doing those two together, I was able to have this wonderful experience. And then um, moved on and took that experience and went to do something called medical education. So went on to the outside world, went, took these messages about products across the world and met many, many different, um, you know, across, across boundaries, what therapeutic areas and how they're managed. And also, um, I, I see that, you know, <laughs> Joanne is giving me a limited time, so I'm just going to say that the, um, I was um, ended up as a global regulatory lead putting together packages uh, for the FDA and the EMA to review. So took a 180 degree turn from the, all the other things that I did and came back to research. And this has been the span across so many different therapeutic areas I've listed here. And this has been an interesting journey as a scientist. And so with that, I just want to show where this long road of new medicine is and that idea that you see there and where the new medicine is and where you can fit in in various ways. And so in the end, I would like to conclude by saying 360 Pharma Solutions, where I am now, is um, the only industry clinical to market solution. We do have experts as part of the team with 20 plus years of corporate pharma and biotech and medical device experience. We have experience in several therapeutic areas. You can see them cross with my slide as well. We do have very good processes. Uh, I'd like to highlight that 360 has um, PQO, which is a performance quality officer in place that we use um, for every project. Um, the company is headquartered in Philadelphia with resources available globally. And it is, of course, a certified uh, women-owned and minority-owned business as well. So with that, I would like to thank you for your time. And um, hopefully, if you have any questions, feel free to stop by. And I'll be still here in the audience for some time. So thank you very much for the opportunity.